recording now because <laughs> I forgot to hit recording and we are Facebook living into the Renew with Redox Facebook group. So if you're not a part of that group, uh, you want to learn about more of what Redox is all about, then by all means, please get back to the person that invited you to this call and ask them to add you to that group. Okay, so now I'm guessing that all of you are here today because you uh, you love health. You're, um, you may know someone, uh, you may be having a health challenge or you may know someone that's having a health challenge or you just may be a health advocate and wanna, wanna help others. And that's a great thing because you can learn uh, some of the wisdom and knowledge we've got to, we're offering today and pass that on to others. And I really encourage you to do that, to pay it forward. You know, um, I was listening to Stephen Covey the other day and he's in the seven habits of highly uh, effective people. He actually talks about reading the book as though you're going to teach someone. Okay. Because that changes your brain. It takes changes the way you take on information. I'd like you to take that attitude with today's call and think, and as you go through the call today, I'm sure there's going to be someone you could think, Oh wow, they could really benefit from that. And then go and teach them with that. Um, if there are people right now that you think, Hey, you know, they probably could do with some help in gaining purpose in their life, send them an invite right away. Um, Nikki, if you can please put a, um, the link to, to for people to register and the chat box and just say, Hey, this is happening live as we speak. <coughs> um, they can be either in the Facebook live and be in a conversation or in the live zoom, which is even better. And I encourage you to please pop your comments and your questions uh, in the chat box as well. Uh, love to hear from the, the, the audience and the, the participation. I know we've got some, some hardcore groupies, which we love seeing you every week. Thank you for making your coffee at the same time every week and joining us for the call. Now, let me introduce our amazing guest speaker. So uh, the incredible Yoss Sawyer, AKA the Lifestyle Medicine Man. Uh, Yoss was born in 1958 in Germany and he is a doctor of Chinese medicine. He started working as a therapist in 1991. And Yost has founded and operated health centers and worked with world internationally celebrity clients and done all sorts of amazing things. Author of many books, great speaker, uh, facilitating workshops, all sorts of great stuff. Now, Yost had a background in health and fitness. He always had a real passion for that, including competitive snow skiing at national level, bodybuilding, triathlons, Ironman training. But when he discovered Kung Fu and Tai Chi, he realized that fitness was only a part of the equation and vitality is the other. And that led to decades more research into how to live and how to use nutritional supplements and optimal diet, exercise therapy, weightlifting, martial arts, meditation, Tai Chi, yoga, redox signaling molecules, all to make you feel good. And that's what it's all about, right? So then Yost added the 24 hour movement of Qi, which is like a Chinese medicine version of the, the Qi cycle body clock. And this is the ultimate in lifestyle medicine. It's founded on thousands of years of Chinese medicine with over 30 years of Yoss own academic research and practical observations from living it. So Yoss is a pretty extraordinary uh, example of that. And as I said, author of many books, uh, Clock on to Health is his latest book, which really describes in detail how to live this chi cycle. I really encourage you to check that out. I'm going to put the links into his website where you can get a whole bunch of free resources uh, and purchase his book from as well. And and want to welcome put your hands together for the amazing yacht soy today hey, hey, hello. <laughs> hey brother thank you so much for coming on the call again and yeah. i'm so excited to be talking about putting purpose into play with you today yes because china's medicine once again got lots to say in that regard because when it comes to living a purpose um, obviously, that's the main goal in Chinese medicine because, uh, as we talked about it last week, the highest form of medicine focuses on longevity by, by using the medicine to assist in finding your purpose and living your purpose because then you've got the support of the universe. If you follow your purpose and you do it support to what you've been doing, you have the chi available to be the person that you want to be. And that means, <clears throat> from that perspective, what, how we, the way we live is, we keep moving towards the goal realization. And when it comes to the end of life, boom, that's it, we cross over. As opposed to reaching a certain age, say 55, and then have a gradual decline towards death. So in Chinese medicine, <clears throat> we don't focus on this gradual decline. 
in Chinese. The idea of the Taoist philosophy all along has been you identify who you are and you're going to fight for your destiny. You're going to kick ass all your way to the, to the last day. And that's, that's it. Move on. But then it says, you will continue the journey on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so you continue work on that project, whatever you need to work on. And then when, it, when, it, when it's time to incarnate again, it is going to continue this. So it's like this upward spiral between the physical world and the astral world. And we're just focusing on following up on our purpose. So there's never an end to it. Yeah. And the progress uh, it gets more... Obviously, what they say is as we develop our purpose, our level of responsibility also rises. We're getting more and more jobs offered to us. Eventually, it will be of very high order where we just probably just have to look after planets and things like that. So it's <laughs> very exciting. Yeah? Just a little bit of responsibility, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, what what you said there, like because the, Christ said, I think the Buddha said, as yeah. within, so without. As yeah. above, so below. So as we are living on earth, you know, that, then that's how we're living in heaven. There's this reflection and it's kind of like this holographic uh, philosophy of, of life. Like, you know, how we're experiencing the universe within me is also how I'm, you know, we're experiencing the universe in you. This kind of philosophy, yeah. Yes. I mean, the Chinese medicine and the Taoist philosophy in particular say that life on the other side is very similar to what it's here. It's just we don't have a physical body that carries that can generate pain. We are an energetic energetic being, but we got cities, we got buildings, we got universities, we got training studios, uh, and in there we constantly uh, learn more about. And when we incarnate into denser forms, which is the physical reality, we put into place what we learn, and then we. But the agenda, what we work on, will be forever. For example. If the drive is to discover the perfect melody, it's going to be with you forever in your journey to discover the ultimate application of the melody, which is the musician. Uh, and because with each frequent melody comes the frequency, the frequency acts on your organ. So eventually you understand how to use music for healing and then you use music in order to, to manifest matter. So it's, it's, it's an exciting uh, future that's waiting for us. So what we know at the moment is very little. And when you study under the, under the masters, it's always, uh, always very exciting to know what's actually waiting for us. And, but as Lao Tzu said, every journey starts with the first step. So we're going to do the first step. And uh, <laughs> so the first step means to understand that there is a medicine available in order for us to apply. And there's a medicine available to us for us to not only identify our purpose, but also to, to, to realize our purpose, which I said, like to put your purpose, make pur put purpose in play. And um, Chinese medicine uses the medicine in order to move forward. So this is a big issue that I've dealt with in, in all my time in clinic, because the specialization I was on in the early days was drug addiction. And with drug addiction, you come across people with lots of ideas, a lot of dreams, because the drugs open you up to your soul nature, you suddenly realize who you are. And then you get all these ideas, you feel inspired to talk about your ideas and your goals. But then you never follow up on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, the the, the, the substance that is most, most responsible for um, presenting you with ideas and goals and wanting to talk about it is actually marijuana and hashish. And okay. yeah, um, marijuana is the drug that actually gets you in touch <clears throat> with your ideas, with your goals, and you love talking about it, but it takes away the ability to act on your ideas. So, like in Australian terms, he's an ideas man, that one. <laughs> but, but no follow through, eh? I like to call him a starter, not a finisher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what it is, you become a talker, not a doer. Yeah, that's another good one, yeah. And so, so sitting down, having a few counts and talk about what you're going to do. And the next day, don't act on it. It's, very, yeah. it's just the nature of the life. And... 
So that has been a puzzle all along for, for Western therapies to identify why is that, that that people will smoke a lot of pot, get caught up in talking about ideas, but don't follow up on ideas. Mm -hmm. and, um, unless you start taking cocaine, then you actually act on it for a while. But then the cocaine depletes and then you you're right back at the start. You burn out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and along the journey, you find out there's a simpler, easier way, which is just to live well. <laughs> yeah. um, it's less expensive as well. <laughs> so that's where we, in Chinese medicine, you can actually explain what that means because marijuana and hashish operate via the liver and liver opens up in the eyes, which is why you, you get red eyes when you smoke pot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is why every pot smoker takes eye drops with them because in order to put it in the eye, so you don't, you don't, it's a giveaway. Yeah. <clears throat> Someone was stoned is a giveaway, you can tell. And that's the liver because the pot activates the liver. So goals in our dreams resonate with that's property of the liver. So the liver is the organ affiliated with spring, which putting into manifestation, the new idea. Mm. In the five element cycle, wood feeds the fire. You put wood into fire and fires the heart and fires the realization of the ideal. So the wood is the movement, it's motion. That means wood, the, the liver is affiliated with ideas. The wood provides the fire. That means when we talk about our ideas, we actually experiencing movement. So we're feeling good. So talking about ideas makes us feel good. So meeting people, get, come together, have a cup of coffee and talk about what we're gonna do, what business we're gonna start, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, makes us feel good. Mm -hmm. But then to act on it, it's not straightforward. And that requires a totally different energetic. So the liver, in order to work for the liver to actually act on ideas, it needs the support from the water, from the kidney, because water nourishes wood. So if you want to make wood grow, you have to water the wood. Mm. Yeah. And so if the wood grows, you get lots of wood to feed the fire. The fire resonates with your heart. It's the idea. It's the manifestation of the idea. That's the realization of the idea. That's the excitement. Mm -hmm. So in order to nurture the idea, we have to water the wood. So that means uh, the water is affiliated with kidney. So kidney is the organ that provides the fuel behind the idea. I'm sensing a pattern here. <clears throat> a pattern? Which pattern is that? Chid kidney chi. <laughs> it always goes back to some sort of like truth. It always goes back to the fundamental laws. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so the idea, talking about the idea, the goal setting, that is the wood element, that's liver. If the kidney is deficient, it can't water the liver. It can't water, it can't nourish the ideas. Mm. If it can't nourish the idea, it's like dry wood. It, it's not moving. It's now it creates a stagnation instead. So the wood element or the liver in Chinese medicine is also translated as for being coming into, into form. Being, beingness comes into form. Mm -hmm. So that's what spring is. The beingness, being. So that depends on having the water in order to, to nourish it. So this is where it now gets critical because for the liver to realize the idea, it needs to the support of the kidney. But because we live in lifestyle where we have fast food, rushing, 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 
we exhausting the water, the kidney, we having recreational drug abuse, we got excessive fear, anxieties and stress, all that depletes the kidney. As it depletes the kidney, it, it now impacts on the liver and it weakens the liver. So what we have now is we, we sense idea, but we can't act on it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so what's happening now is a lot of people uh, feel frustrated about, about life and sitting down and talking about ideas and dreams they want to do makes them feel good because it's movement in liver. Mm -hmm. So what they do now, they join motivational seminars. So they go to Anthony Robbins and all these other motivational um, seminar speakers, workshops, etc., and they get fired up. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Anthony Robbins, you look at Mr. Kidney Man. He's got so many, he's got such strong bones. He's got too much kidney. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's, it's got too much, uh, far too much energy in the kidney, which is why he can go all day. Yeah. So which is why he manifests so easily. Yeah. Because of that strong kidney. Of course, when you go into the presence of someone like that, you feel motivated to act. But as soon as you go home afterwards, you might be, the fire may be around for two days and then, and then can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah. And then, yep. now you need the motivational tapes and more motivation. And now you're enrolling with motivational speakers and you get all kinds of like coaches on board will motivate you. Mm -hmm. But if there's not enough water to, to nourish the wood, you can't, it, it's not, you don't manifest, it's not happening. Isn't that an interesting concept? Because like, I know a lot of people and, and myself included, I've spent a fair bit of money on inspirational speakers, going to see motivational speakers, coaches, all that sort of stuff. You know, I'm a health coach, business coach, you know, so yeah, but uh, imagine if all the, you know, people had spent the same money uh, and energy on building kidney chi, probably would have got more done in the world. Yeah, but probably 20 times more. <laughs> yeah yes yeah and and yeah, those the people that are listening on this call uh that have heard some of the calls before perhaps you're not aware we've done a whole series of these we've been doing it every week for i don't know since covid really like hit right and this this concept of building kidney chi through lifestyle it's been a theme through all of the different calls we've covered yes it's just you can have the best idea in the world and the best intent to act on it, if the water doesn't nourish the wood, it will not grow. Mm. Beingness will not manifest, spring will not happen. Mm. So, it, so it all comes down, in Chinese medicine, everything is holistic. We always look at what, what else is involved, yes? Yep. And yep. Uh, so we, just getting motivated is not enough. Yeah, this is where, look, I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of people who have been enormously frustrated and almost like fell in depression because having done, having done too many motivational seminars and unable to manifest. And where they started to believe something is totally wrong with me. Yeah. And yeah. especially with Anthony Robbins back in the 90s when, when those workshops were big everywhere, it really caused a lot of trouble. And actually quite a few counselors specialized on um, post Anthony Robbins damage counseling. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It just, there were quite a few. It, so it became actually a business in itself. <laughs> Cause I was so high from being doing the courses and then I just crash afterwards. Feel like not a water. Yeah. Not enough water. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The biggest problem here was, uh, was what, what happened in the beginning was he told everyone, not to eat during the day and not to, to only have fruit during the day in order to, to, to not to get slowed down. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of kidney deficient people joined those um, uh, workshops. And, and as the result of that is that they have made the situation worse. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get that. So, it's, it's, so uh, we've got to look at behind the psychological intent is also a biological need. So it's not just the mind. So people will say motivation is just in the mind. In Chinese medicine, we would say, no, it's both. Of course, you need to have the intent. Of course, you need to have the goal. But you also need to have the water in order to nourish it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, and um, that's obviously the first thing is to <clears throat> to look at the lifestyle. Yeah. 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 And absolutely. So, like another thing is obviously what happens with people will get into realizing their goals and ideas. They're going to overwork mode. As a therapist, so I observe that on a regular basis that people are frustrated because you wouldn't follow up on your ideas if you wouldn't be frustrated about a certain aspect of your life in the first place. So mm -hmm. certain aspects about your life don't add up. I need to change my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now it goes into, okay, I seek the help. <clears throat> I get the um, therapist who will, will guide me and all kind of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, but then it, 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 it falls by the wayside because what happens is the person now overworks themselves. Yeah. Because obviously that's what everyone's saying. Okay. You've got to work hard on your goals. You've got to work hard on your dreams. You've got to just work 12 hours, 14 hours, bang, 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 bang. Yeah. And um, so what happens now is um, people actually overworking themselves in order to follow up on the dreams. And what happens now, the water gets more and more depleted because if you overwork yourself, you don't, you don't refill the water in the water tank. You're yeah. using your water because that's your kidney jing, that's your power, you over. So it means eventually what happens is the goal goes further and further away. Or what also happens is that you, you may manifest the goal, but you, you can't enjoy the goal because in order to experience the goal, you need to have the water to be in the, into the present now. Yeah. So, so we've got a lot of uh, like, uh, um, all kinds of observation in success strategies, how it is more than just working on your goals. It's more than just writing down goals. It's more than just sitting with your money, with your goals every day. There's more going on here. Yeah. Quite a few comments in the chat box around like people finding that the long courses are, are really exhausting as well and counterproductive, you know, like sometimes uh, you, you might do so uh, the, quite a lot of the personal development courses, they try and jam it in three days, but they're huge days. You know, there's kind of like 16, 20 hour days. Uh, I know I've been up till two, three o'clock in the morning at personal development mm -hmm. courses and then back at sort of not, you know, eight, nine o'clock in the morning as well. And yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, it's a weird philosophy, but um, yeah, it's definitely depleting. Yeah. I mean, Anthony Robbins back in the nineties, he was well known for uh, working with people till two in the morning. And then he started again next morning at eight o'clock. So he was taking people through like 16 hours in, in a row, in a row. Mm. And uh, obviously by that time it became very obvious that Anthony Robbins is not from this planet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's also ironic because the, the reason that some of these courses, they put it into three days is because people didn't have the time to do a five day course. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> yeah. The whole they smash it out in three days and take two days to recover. <laughs> yeah. Is, so we have, we already got a really great observation to draw from. And it's just like the idea is to work smarter, not harder. Yes. yes. And that's a key element. And that requires, first of all, holistically to look at the whole situation. Mm. So if I, if I have a dream, if I have a goal and I want to follow my purpose, that relates to deliver and and hard but what is responsible for the manifestation is water the kidney so equal to the goal setting i need to also put in place a strategy how to build my kidney energy mm, absolutely That's a good yeah start. everyone talks yeah. about goal setting but not many people talk about nurturing how to achieve that yeah, yeah. Actually, nicole and i've always said that from the beginning is like okay, if you want to build a business in this, then what are you willing to give up? Because it's not just like add more on your plate as you're going to crash you. It's like having to manage the lifestyle as you, as you build something. Yeah. The way I always talk to my, the way I work with it myself, the way I talk to my clients about it or come in, into clinic, you have a, like a two table goal setting and you got one goal setting is about the goals in terms of your business, the purpose you want to follow then decided all the goals, what are required in order to build your kidney, build your spleen, all the other aspects. So that means they are in harmony at all times. Yep. So if I've got that particular goal, what organ does it relate to? If I have this goal, what organ do I need to build? Yeah. yeah. So that, um, so the goal is the mental aspect, which is in your mind, but 
your, your kidney, your organ is your hardware. So as you improve the mind and towards the goal, you have to upgrade the hardware at all times. You have to upgrade. Yep. yep. You can't imagine an, a, a smartphone or computer not to regular upgrade itself. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like you get a great idea to do a road trip to Sydney from Brisbane, thousand kilometer trip, and uh, you don't even think about the fact that your vehicle's a moped. Let's yeah. jump on the little <laughs> scooter. <laughs> It's yeah, like, yeah, we might need to upgrade to like a real car or even a camper van. What an idea. <laughs> That's exactly the point. So the, like the goal in Chinese medicine, it's yin and yang. So purpose relates to a certain level kidney. Goal setting relates to a certain level spleen. So we need to understand that without the organ in place, most likely it will not manifest itself. There's no substance. Yep. And, and so, I, I, I find that all the time. It's, it, I talk to people and they've got all these ideas or they can't choose an idea or they, they give it a little nudge. They, they work a little bit on trying to manifest a, an idea, but they just don't have the oomph, the follow through to keep it going. And yeah. what you're saying to me is like, so, so many of these people, what they really need is to, look at the bigger picture and build themselves up, build their kidney chi, build the substance. So they've got the strength to take the action and to see the manifestation of their yeah. goal. The first thing we've got to be aware of is like the goal is for, it's, it's for infinity. It's not just for a short while, then retire and sit back. Our body, mind, spirit is not designed to achieve a certain state and then sit back and enjoy it. And then that's all there is. It never ends. Yeah. The first thing what we need to understand is whatever the purpose is, the goal that we work on, it's infinite. It never ends. So it's yeah. not just yes, reaching a certain level, then retire. It won't make you happy. Well, the stats in Australia show that 80% of people that go from full-time work to full-time retirement are either sick or dead within five years. Yeah. Because I think 90% of people are actually achieving success in retirement because they lose their purpose. And they must be the 20% that are playing golf or doing volunteer work or, you know, being good grandparents. There's another purpose that's replaced their vocation. Yes. Yes. We just, first of all, like that's almost like the first step. If we, in, if we need to understand that it's, it's forever. That's awesome. So that means this is why mindfulness is crucial. Mindful, when we start the day with mindfulness, with meditation, with Tai Chi, we, go on into, we, we, we get in touch with our soul. That means we get in touch with our infinite nature. We suddenly realize who we are, that we, okay, I'm a therapist's soul, I'm, a, I'm an architect's soul, I'm a musician's soul. You just understand, you just, because if you do meditation on a, on a while, start sensing who you are, yeah? And you're realizing, okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a networking soul. I'm a, I'm a, I'm like I'm a building soul, and so on. There's all kind of like, everyone's made with a certain purpose in mind. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. So uh, everything got its place. Even the smallest particle on subatomic level got its purpose. So everything is designed. Is everything is run by intelligence, and the intelligence is in each particle, in each. So so that means mindfulness is the first step. That what it means is every day we start the day with connecting to our soul, to our true nature, infinite nature. Then we're becoming aware that it's an infinite journey, not just for the next five years. Mm. Yep. It's infinite. So it's not like in five years I make it. You know, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. And yeah, it's just like yeah. Yeah, when, I, when I got into my, into my, my, when I started into all this with my goal setting back in the 80s, my goal was to write a book. Okay, then I had the first book, then I realized I have to write the second book. <laughs> yeah, what are you up to now? Like your ninth book or something? Yeah. I worked with quite a few Olymp Olympians in my time, people who had done the Olympic model. And as soon as they were on the pedestal, they had the gold model, yeah. within, within, within five minutes, okay, when is the next gold medal? Yeah, so, uh, so the, the some uh, therapists say that the mind will never be happy. Uh, it's an ignorant view on the whole situation from my perspective. It's the fact that we are designed to keep moving. 
we're not we're still stable will not work in life it's not possible still stand sitting still doesn't exist it's a moving forward the planet will not suddenly stop moving forward the planet travels at 75000 km per hour it's traveling towards something we don't know what it's moving towards and uh, so the, the nature of life is to move towards and buddha mind is easily translated as moving towards and the taoist philosophy is about the way moving the way to move towards yeah so the mindfulness is crucial because that takes us into this infinite motion of ourselves yes yeah yeah and uh, then we understand it's infinite it's forever that takes pressure off yeah suddenly we realize it's not about i need to be the influencer next year and i'm going to have 2 million followers next year and then it's all done it's it, it's, it never finishes it, it never stops and um, so first of all we if we connect to our true nature we understand it's infinite we are at ease so therefore we don't get frantic we don't get hectic mm. yeah as you, because you know you got to have forever <laughs> so what's the point of rushing <laughs> that's right that's a, the big picture hey is the macro the micro and the macro and when you zoom out and you look at the big picture it just changes everything yeah, it's, 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 it's silly to, 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 like what you were stressed about 20 years ago, you rushed to get done. You don't even know today that that happened. <laughs> yeah. So you've got other things to worry about. So, so first of all, we need to understand there's no need to rush. Yeah. But we can't sit, stand still either. So yeah. It's definitely moving. So, but the idea is to keep moving in, 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 in mindful, in, in harmony with, 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 the body with your organs and with your intent and your purpose mm. so you start rushing it we're depleting the organs and how many success strategies people i have seen in my time who completely depleted their organs because of rushing success yeah so that they go they reach their so-called goal but they got the two million dollar house they got the three cars they got everything but the body can't cope and I feel now they can't enjoy it. And, and that's, that's not, so mindfulness is the key. So we've got to start, that's the first rule. Uh, and the reason why that is also important is because if you don't know what to do by becoming mindful, or we're sinking into our organ system, we can sense what we are made to do. Yeah. Yeah. Intuition so, comes. Yeah. So that's, uh, uh, um, uh, so we, that's, I've never met anyone who gets into deep meditation and, and, and Tai Chi training would will not sense their purpose at some stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because purpose is number one in my work that comes up all the time. I don't know what I'm in about, but people, if you don't know your purpose, it's usually because you're rushed. Yeah, I was just about to say that my observation is people that do a lot of meditation or do a lot of stillness, whether through Tai Chi or yoga, they, real like you never see them frantic yeah because you know because you you're in touch with you with yin and yang at the same time you see that's the next thing goal setting and achievement of your goals and running your goals is that is in chinese medicine referred to as liver yang advance and act mm -hmm. the ability to to sit back is liver yin which is called retreat and wait the ability to wait. So if you work with yin and yang equally through mindfulness, through your practice, through correct eating, liver yang and liver yin are at both on equal terms. What it means now is I'm, I move towards my goal, but I can equally able to, to sit back and wait. So if I neglect aspects of my life such as if i don't take herbs to build my kidney if i don't eat the right foods to build my kidney if i keep rushing and don't do mindfulness if i don't do meditation what happens is the yin will deplete and the yang will go up and now liver yang becomes excess so if you've got too much liver yang that means 
you've got to go, but you can't wait. Mm. You can't wait. It's just like standing in a queue at the bank in this uh, um, imbalance of liver yin and liver yang will irritate the shit out of you. It will make you aggravated. Mm. Yes. Um, I was very fortunate to have met Robert Kiyosaki in person back in, in the mid nineties. Robert Kiyosaki wrote that book. Um, uh, 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 Rich Dad, uh, Poor Dad, yeah, Cash Flow yeah. Quadrant, Business yeah, yeah. of the 21st Century. Awesome yeah. guy. Because one guy, uh, uh, one of my clients, he actually set up the seminars for him. And he was, Robert Kiyosaki was at the convention center and he was mm -hmm. speaking to uh, 5,000 people. So I, I had an opportunity to meet him in person afterwards. That's when I realized the imbalance between liver yang and liver yin. So he was immediately engaging with me, but on the, on the perspective only to access, am I of any use to him? Is there any interest of that connection? Of, of, um, because the liver yang wants to engage and, and act, but there's not enough waiting because the liver yin was depleted. So it wasn't about being concentrated at presence with me in that moment. It was about moving towards the next already. So if liver yang gets out of control and liver yin is down, what it means is the person lives into the next stage. It is not in the present now. So that means um, you, you, before you go into your car, you, your mind is already at the bank paying the bill. By the time you're at the bank, your mind is already at the office. By the time in the office, your mind is already at the next meeting. You, yeah. you're, never, you're never at, at point zero. Yeah. You're always one step ahead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that means everyone you engage with is somehow a burden, is an aggravating factor, it's an issue. So you're always cranky, always irritable, always like, get the fuck out of my way. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So like a bull in a china shop, you're kind of not, not uh, respecting relationships. You're not being present with people. Yeah. Too busy. Too busy getting out of my way. So for example, business strategies, success strategies with car salesmen and real estate people can, because of their lifestyle, drinking lots of coffee. Yeah. Um, that means it rises the heat. Coffee brings up liver yang. Mm -hmm. um, eating spicy food brings up the liver yang. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then rushing brings up liver yang. <clears throat> so a lot of success strategies, people obviously drink lots of coffee and then all they bring up, stimulate liver yang. <clears throat> so that means if you're with them, they can't really listen. Yeah. So they yep. may go to workshops and learn how to listen. They, 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 they do workshops to, in order to develop listen, listening skills. But mm -hmm. if your liver yin is low and your liver yang is up, you cannot listen. Yeah, that's a really good point. And Kylie just put it in the chat box as well. That's why she, she preferred to listen to books rather than read them. And I promote like reading and listening to books all the time. But you have to still have a level of consciousness to listen to it. Otherwise, it's just words. It's just noise going in your ears. And it's actually probably worse for you. It, you yeah. have to be in a state where you are consciously listening and you can do that while walking the dogs. You can do that while gardening, but it does require mindfulness. Yeah. And with, if liver yin and liver yang is out of balance, which is what success strategies can cause, you will not have uh, biological listening skills. Mm. You may paraphrase and rephrase and, but it's mental. It's not real. And after yeah. one, no, you can't be with that person. It's just, it's, it's technical, not from the heart. It's not real. Yeah. I love that. I, that is perfect. Like when yeah. someone is just two in a head, they got excess yang. It's a technical conversation. It's not from the heart. That's a little piece of gold. Everyone. I hope everyone's like taking notes. I do every single like interview and webinar we do with Yost. I'm taking notes and reflecting on them. So so Please. what happens now is as you more and more depletes like that, what happens is um, it, the person becomes more and more frustrated. So as the liver yin goes down, what happens eventually it will reach a point where it switches and it goes the other way. And now liver yin goes above and not enough liver yang. So now it goes into the crashing mode. Suddenly the person is crashing all the time. Yeah. 
And um, so this is the situation now where the person is burned out. That's like the burnout where like, boom, suddenly it's just all liver yin. Liver yin is retreat and wait. Suddenly it's all about waiting, but no action. And uh, they can't get going in the mornings because it is like they just rather wait. So now it goes into staring. And now, uh, now it goes the complete opposite. Instead of unable to listen because of yin and yang deficiency and all like this, now they're unable to interact. <laughs> mm. And there's yeah. a lot of people would call that adrenal burnout or fatigue, really? like oh. chronic fatigue. And, and yeah, there are different reasons for all of that. But, you know, I suspect a lot of people that are suffering from, from that. Yes, yes. Because we are driven to succeed. In order to succeed, we are drawn to that what builds the yang. And that is, first of all, coffee. Yeah. Uh, mm. So we, we are stimulant society. That's the thing, because uh, with success, you will have stimulation. And um, the stimulants are primarily coffee. So like, for example, 30 years to have, 30 years ago, if you would have a cup of coffee in a, in a coffee shop, it was maybe just one shot or maybe half a shot, you know, like uh, maybe yeah. 20 milligrams of caffeine. These days, it's very, when you talk to baristas, it's very common for people having three shots in their coffee, four shots, five shots. Yeah. yeah, totally. That's a worry. And yeah. just a little caveat. I know I call this like our coffee chat, but you know, I'm drinking tea. So yes, yeah, sometimes I'm drinking coffee. You don't have to have coffee while we're doing this chat, but the, the teas are a very different situation. Yes. You are green tea is a beautiful balance of, it brings you some yang, but it brings equal amount of yin. So like green tea is a treasure is a gold in Chinese medicine and good green tea, like really, state of the art green tea gets traded up to $10,000 a kilogram. That's how, uh, how that's like, it's like an expensive bottle of red wine. Mm. Uh, really good green tea has got the perfect balance between yin and yang. Yes. And so when you drink it, you, you feel the yang, but equally you've got the ability of the yin. It's just awesome. You never get to the point where it can cause anxiety. Yeah. So, um, so uh, but it has to be good green tea in order to do that. A lot of the green tea that people drink is like the green tea in supermarket. That's not green tea. That's like, that's tea that looks green, but it's not green tea. And, <laughs> Mass um, produced. Stuff, yeah. yeah. I would recommend if you want to get some good experience of green tea, get the company T2, capital T, uppercase T, with number two behind. Mm -hmm. There are, um, um, have you, can you put it up? T2. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in, so T2, but you, you use specific. Oh, that's, it, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. that, that is a weird, that, that, obviously that's a good starting point. That company is a really good starting point yep. uh, because they have high quality tea. Well, you, play, you pay $15 for a little bag, for a yep. little box of, uh, um, of, of green tea leaves. And um, then I would recommend to do research on how to, how to brew green tea, what water to use, how, because there's all kind of tea ceremony in China and in Japan is, is, a, is of highest order. I've, I've, I've done tea ceremonies with Chinese masters and where you just, you just, you, you transcend yourself into it. And then they give you the pot and you think you go into mindfulness and they constantly work with the water. And then you take a zip. And in that moment, you feel like you're having cocaine going through your system. It's like, wow, what is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you always have tea when you're doing your consults. You've always got beautiful tea on. Profound. And <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just like I had experiences with them, but almost otherworldly. Yes. Wow. So, so it's just, uh, yeah, because depending on how they brew the green tea, because a lot of the Tai Chi masters actually, when they have the water in the, in the cup, they, they move the, the, the pot up and down and they transmit Tai Chi, in, they put cosmic Chi into it because they just vibrate the vibration of that chi, um, because the green tea takes on the leaves, it takes on the vibration, it carries it. Mm. And then obviously the water is purified, the water is cleansed and blessed and all kind of stuff. So before yeah. that, all the water, they put chi work on the water and that is like all, the, all kind of meditations. And then they, then they take it to 85 degrees, not 100, just before it boils. And then I put it slowly, slowly pour it in slowly and then i take it out again and pull it slowly back in again and in order to get the three times immersion process 
and then I go in meditation process, and then, then, I, then I put a little bit in a cup, and I hand you the cup, and you're in heaven. It's, 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 it's profound. So obviously, that will take half an hour. For someone who's got too much liver, yeah, not enough yet, not possible. So <laughs> They're too busy for that, yeah. <laughs> they would go crazy. Well, after two minutes, say, hurry up, man. Go on, yeah. I don't have all day. <laughs> I need my five-shot caffeine in two, you know, 30 seconds. Please. Yeah, that's right. Like, they have that in a, in a, in a takeaway cup and uh, at the coffee stall and things like that. As soon as, like, the change started with our depletion of society started the day when we had takeaway coffee in coffee cups. That's what the first change in society towards the depletion of kidney yang and kidney yin. Mm. Before that, we didn't see that. We didn't see that 30 years ago. 30 years ago, when you, had a, when, you, when you met someone for coffee, you didn't have, you didn't go to the takeaway shop first and had your coffee and then you drive in your car with your coffee in your hand and then you enter the coffee shop. Yeah, so, yeah. first of all, in the old days, what you did is you went to the coffee shop, you sat down, you established space, you got into yin, you put the yin in first. Yeah? Mm. And that's like a coffee ceremony that the, Arab, the, the Muslims know too well in Arabia. Everything is just like, first of all, established space. Once again, same as the green tea ceremony. Water, 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 settle down, sink in, now we drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, a, lot, a lot of the, the, the traditions of the Greek people who love good coffee, same thing. They're going to brew the coffee first. They just grind the coffee beans first. They're going to sit down. They're, and now, by the time it's all done, now we're going to first of all connect on a deep heart level, and now we drink the coffee. Yeah, yeah. totally. Same with Egypt. You know, you'd see the, see the so, guys sitting yeah. around in a circle, like it's like having coffee is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. So and, the- and look at Afghanistan, where, you know, a, a country, you know, so much conflict there, and they're really teaching more and more for the military to be sitting down and having tea with the elders. Yeah. Just, so, really what it comes down to in order to manifest the goals we need first of all have mindfulness so we understand what in fact is our purpose Stephen Corbett in that book seven habits of highly effective people he talked about leaning the ladder against the right wall because it's very common if we rush and don't have mindfulness and we keep liver yang stimulating mm. It's very common to, to put the against the wrong wall and then we climb up and then reach the top and then we look around and we realize we, we are against the wrong wall. We shouldn't have been here. <laughs> and then we have to climb down again and start again. So we're actually wasting more time. Like if we rush success, we waste our time. That's what the Chinese masters say. Mm. So we can't rush this. That's, that's why the day always starts with mindfulness. As we talk, spoke so many times here before, if you have children, um, get up before your children. Mindfulness is the first step towards success. That's the absolute number one. That means at least you understand your infinite goal. You understand you're an eternal being. It will not happen in just five years. It's meant forever. So that means you don't need to rush. So you start with the right uh, mind. You start with the right state of mind. That it's not. It's pointless to rush. Yeah. So the next thing is you're establishing the yin. And um, that means you've got the yin established. So now you can sense what it is that you need to be doing, but you also got the yin established. So when you then start working on your yang, which manifests the goals, you've got the equal amount of yin to balance it. Yes? So that's why, first of all, the yin needs to come into it. Okay. So the next thing is, a lot of people feel too depleted to act on their goals, or they have the goals and they don't act. And so the first thing what I do is always I address people kidney state. What is your kidney condition? What is actually going on with the kidney? And um, um, obviously the, uh, there are Chinese herbs that are designed to build your kidney. Yeah. So the first, like, if you build your kidney, you will always act on your goals. That's how it is. How, how do you know? Simply because cocaine activates kidney energy. So you, if you want to manifest your goals, take cocaine, you will do it. 
Why is that? Why, does, why is cocaine such a desirable drug? Why is it so potent? Why is it one of the, the most expensive drug? Because it unleashes kidney yang and kidney yin and it makes you do things. Mm. Yes, yeah, that's, what, that's what amphetamines do. Amphetamines make you do things. Yeah? So, um, so you, you feel inspired to do things. When you, when you take, when you take um, 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 uh, 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 cocaine and amphetamines, you feel from within the water nourishes the wood and now you want to do things. Yeah. So obviously doing it with cocaine and, and amphetamine is, is not a longevity process because it will burn you out and then you're back at the start point. Therefore we're going to work with kidney herbs and I worked with over 30 years identifying all the different kidney herbs and the best kidney herb is the Empress formula, which is the well being. Yeah. This is yeah. like, I've, I've worked with tens of thousands of people. It's just, it's, it's, it's the ultimate kidney builder. Um, that Empress formula was developed by the Ming Dynasty. Uh, the formula was developed over 1500 years. And it's only lately that it became available to the mass market. So that's only the last 40, 50 years. Before that, it was like a hidden secret. And the Empress formula was designed to give to the emperor so that it can succeed because if the emperor succeeds the country benefits you yep. know if, if, if the emperor is burned out and sit there and, and don't act on what the, what the country needs the country suffers so uh, the emperor's formula was designed to make the emperor do things yeah and in my line of work where i've seen so many where purpose comes up as number one in the presentation um, I always work, first of all, identify the kidney, yeah. And yep. um, so the, the well-being or the, the, the kidney formula is absolute number one, yeah. So, that's, uh, so there's nothing else um, on the market that comes even close to it. Otherwise, I would talk about it because I, I always talk about what are the best herbs for what, yeah. Yeah, yep. um, uh, it's So... And for the, I remember years, maybe 10 years ago, we had a conversation about how you actually tried to make it and you had, you had other, other formulators that you worked with and you like really tried to make a copy of that or, or an emperor's formula, but you just couldn't get the same effectiveness. So that's why you recommend that specific one, even though it had the same ingredients in it, it just didn't have the same energetic impact. Oh, so, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's quite profound. I mean, um, that company that produces the kidney, the, the well-being, which what the Empress formula, they sold, they bought that, uh, the, 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 the rights from the, from the Chinese. So there's some direct transmission of the chi process. So they basically bought it. You, you, you wouldn't put ingredients of a back of a bottle if it's all what it is, it's about the bottles. It's not about the ingredients. It's about how you put it together with green tea. It's not about drinking green tea. It's about how you brew it. It's about the whole ceremony. It's a celebration. When it comes to herbs, it's a really pro complex process of, of um, how you mix the ingredients and what, what state of mind goes in there. Uh, uh, like it's in Chinese medicine, in uh, um, what I talked about last week in the herbal text, they actually describe how to bring in cosmic chi into the herbal mix and infuse the, the herbs with chi. Yeah. So they, the, the Chinese doctors of the past, they were mixing the ingredients and then they were meditating and bringing in heaven, heaven energy and just brought it in, brought it in, brought it in and uh, compressed it into the mix. And then I gave it to people. And um, um, that's uh, so that's like really powerful formulas have got that chi in there. Yeah. Mm. And um, well, so, yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm sure I remember learning about the, the original eight strains of the Bracard or, you know, the eight strains of the Chinese medicine herbalism was one of them, but Feng Shui was another, you know, Qi Gong or Tai Chi, like the, the manipulation of Qi was another, you know, acupressure, acupuncture and so forth. Like yeah. they, so yeah, they didn't just do one. It wasn't just the herbs were isolated, but the herbs were, had this energetics behind them as well. So the next thing in order to realize your goals and to follow up on, on your goals is to put in chi into your body because chi is actually the, the energy that you store in your body is what the kidney energy is about. It then will make you act on your, on your ideas. This is why I always talk about qigong, chi practice. 
So having a daily chi practice brings in the chi from the universe. And the more you bring it in, the more your body gets saturated with chi. Yes. And the more it gets saturated with chi, the more you will be able to act on your ideas. Um, the more chi you have, the more you will act instantly. You cannot have lots of chi and not act on ideas. It's not possible. I've never met uh, a highly trained Tai Chi master or Tai Chi practitioner who, who is not equally successful in business. They all act on ideas. Like um, people always, always ask me, how do you always come up with new ideas? How come you always be on the, on the go? When, what is this? Every morning I, I tank, I store chi. That's, that's the first principle. I don't start the day without storing chi. And I learned that from the master that I studied under who constantly were doing and creating things. But first of all, in order to create, we have to store chi. So this is where the mindfulness comes into the meditation, the chi practice, the qigong. But all this is where Wim Hof breathing comes into. Yeah, Wim Hof breathing is, I mentioned so many times, it's, just, it's essential for everyone. So ideally, like you only need five, six men, maybe 10 minutes in the mornings, but that breathing, what it will do, it will, it will saturate the body with, um, uh, uh, with oxygen. And oxygen in the mornings is cosmic chi. So you flood the whole body with chi. Like um, the, the Wim Hof breathing technique goes with, you do 40 in breath, really deep in breath, breathe out in breath, and you saturate the whole body. And then you, then you breathe out and you hold the breath as long as you can in order to balance uh, your pH value. And that's exactly what liver yin and liver yang is. If you balance your pH in your blood, you balance liver yin and liver yang. So if after about 10 minutes of Wim Hof breathing techniques, you have equal amount of yang as you have yin. You are in a perfect position of being able to act on your dreams and you're able to wait at the same time. You can listen, you can act. You are fully present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's the result of, as you do the first 40 in breath, you, you're saturating the body with oxygen from his perspective as a science, from a Western science. Then you hold your breath as long as you can. Now it burns all the toxic chi, which is the, which is all the all the chi that makes you give the either liver yang or not enough yin, whatever it, whatever that is, what causes the imbalance. So while you hold your breath, whatever the imbalance is in your body, you can feel it's getting more and more balanced. And then suddenly, after by the time you can't hold it any longer and do the big in breath again you feel very balanced. And then you do the next round, same again, 30 in breath, really, really, really deep, hold the breath and then roar. And you can feel every time you hold the breath for one minute or one and a half minute, you can feel how it's balancing your yin and yang. Wim Hof has provided the Western world with, with breathing techniques that otherwise in Tai Chi and Qigong would take 10, 15 years to learn. You can do in, in all what I recommend everyone, get the Wim Hof app, it's only three dollars if you go to the um, iTunes shop, get the get the app, and you follow that, and your life will change. It's like it's 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 absolutely profound what it does. I didn't know he had an app. That's cool. I bought his course online recently. I should have just yeah, bought the app. Really easy to follow. Very easy to follow. And um, I just, uh, you just, you just have it with it and you just, after, it only takes a few sessions with the app and then you know what to do. Then you don't need the app. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's profound. And um, uh, that breathing technique, as I said, instead of, it will take you there what otherwise takes decades of learning. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, because when we want to realize our goals, it's about balancing yin and yang. That's a key element. If yin and yang are out of balance, uh, we either don't act on our goals or we rush and can't enjoy our success. So that's the, so we either don't act on our goals or we can't enjoy the success. So that's the two things. So for example, by the end of the day, if you work on your goals, you go, 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 go. And then people go home and go to the pub and have a few drinks. They're balancing yin and yang in the liver. That's what it does because alcohol operates or works by the liver. Mm -hmm. and, um, so the alcohol brings in the yin in the, in the liver. Yeah, That's why 
Um, that's why uh, success people have coffee during the day and an alcohol in the evenings. So, for example, by the end of the day, so the situation is that we need to understand that everything is subject to yin and yang. If we harm the law of yin and yang, we aren't in flow with Tao. That means we don't realize our success or we don't act on our goals or we can't, uh, we can't even know what to do. So it's, it's, it's very simple. It's all very, very simple. And obviously that's what Clock On, my book is all about. In my book, I outline it all the time. And uh, because the yin and yang process goes throughout the day. So you constantly, every two hours, you balance yin and yang. So um, um, uh, the, the masters I've studied under, um, the Chinese masters in, uh, I studied under, all had very big businesses to run, lots of staff, very successful. But when they were always fully present, fully present into the now. And that's because they're constantly correct yin and yang. They never allow yin and yang to get like that. Yes. So the chi cycle shows that way. That means every two hours, it's normal to follow your goals. It goes like this. And then you correct it, bring it back again. And then you bring it. So by the time comes six o'clock, it's very easy to balance. You can switch off instantly. As opposed to not being aware of that imbalance and throughout the day it gets more and more like that, totally separated. And by the time comes six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, you can't switch off. Yeah. yeah. If, if, the yang is, if the yang is out of, the, out of balance of yin, you cannot switch off. Mm. Great question from Stephanie in the chat there. And that's yeah. about cold showers with the yin and yang as well. I've often promoted cold showers and Wim Hof is known as the ice shaman in yeah. fact. But obviously with all things that there's a balance to that because cold can be an invasion in, in traditional Chinese medicine as well. So I've always used it as a, a balancing tool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, the way I work with it because I always, after my exercise, I always have hot shower first in order to bring the, bring the warmth back in again in order to balance the muscles. Then I have a cold shower. But I wouldn't go straight from exercising hard in a cold morning into a, into a cold shower. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not there's no direct advice as such it's always yin and yang and um, we have to be careful of absolute advice absolute yeah. advice doesn't work in nature yeah, yeah? there's always exceptions so if, you, if you've been if you've been outside in the cold exercising and your muscles are, are, are um, have been exposed to the cold you first of all need to balance them with heat and then you bring it back into cold yeah yeah i uh, i have sometimes uh forced a fully clothed person into a freezing cold shower uh, if they're having a meltdown, if they're having a panic attack, an anxiety attack. Uh, yeah. I, and I've found that to be really, really effective to create a state change. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, just yeah. Chinese medicine will always work with heat first. So uh, Wim Hof is on a mission to demonstrate the possibility that we have as humans. And he pushes the envelope on every level. He's, he's an absolute, he's a realized soul. He's a, he's a master, there's no doubt about it. And uh, um, uh, uh, everyone highly respects him for that because he's also very humble. And uh, because he never, takes, he never takes credit for his fees, he always accredits nature for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, but he also lives, he's got an enormous heat in his body from this excessive breathing that he's been doing for 30 years. So he can expose to the cold that ordinary people can't yet. So yeah. you've got to, got to be aware that you can't just jump in like that. First of all, you're like Chinese medicine. When we finish something, we always, first of all, work with heat in order to balance everything. And then we bring the cold in to, 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 to bring, it, bring it up again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a different way of working. Yeah. Mm. And, um, so, but you've got to find it out yourself. Usually with, if you get the sensitivity from that lifestyle that the chi cycle, for example, will provide, you will know what to do because your body will guide you. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. Well, look, thank you so much again for a great, uh, a great morning coffee chat and, uh, or lunchtime coffee chat these days. Thank you, Jost. Um, it's been awesome to have your nuggets of gold. I want to thank everyone for all of the great comments and the questions in the chat box. I hope that answers your question there, Stephanie. Thanks for tuning in from New Zealand.
Uh, the Facebook uh, was pretty, pretty active today too. So look, thank you everyone. Uh, same time next week, we'll come back with another um, interesting topic to inspire you to be empowered and uh, mm -hmm. to make the most of your life. And I got a lot out of today's call. Super grateful, Yoss. Thank you. Any no uh, parting words of wisdom? Yeah, uh, the parting wisdom is simple. Don't rush. No much point because it's infinite. <laughs> but don't sit still either. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. That's so cool. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Little bit of happiness on the way out. <laughs>